So, Peter, I mean, this is all very confusing, or is it just me? No, it's not you at all. It is complex. It's a complicated interaction between a number of issues and areas. People used to think there was one cause of ADHD, and we now know that actually it's nothing like as simple as that. There isn't a single gene that causes it. There isn't a single neural network that isn't functioning. It is indeed an interplay of multiplicities of all those things. OK, so how can we, how can we simplify it? And I wonder if I could use a metaphor and do a bit of cooking just to show you what might be going on. You're going to take all your clothes off? Well, why not? The That's your cue for the naked show. <laughs> I'll do the jokes. I'll go into this in my Anthony Royal Thompson mode, all right? So you, tie, you, you want some help tying that up? <laughs> Hang on. So what I want to do first is make a gingerbread cake according to a standard recipe. Okay, so uh, uh, this is still to do with ADHD, is it? Or not? It's just, just all will be revealed. Okay, I will start with a load of sugar. Oh, this is a very specific about a health-related program, of course. All extremely healthy. You ever get Ainsley Harris saying, "We'll take a load of sugar." It's like how much? This is a lot. Okay, a load of sugar, a lump of butter, yeah. and an awful lot. Right, and why are we of doing black this? treacle? We're going to make a gingerbread cake, mm -hmm. which represents an ordinary person who does not have ADHD. Okay, so this is all the right ingredients. Absolutely, in just, the right order. Just as the recipe says, lots of flour. Can't make a cake without flour. Those will go in as well. This I can cope with, and some eggs into the mix. Having followed the recipe strictly for the first cake, for the next, they change things slightly. At this time, although we're going to use the same ingredients, we're going to cook it for less long. So cake number three. We're still going to make a gingerbread cake. But on this occasion, but we're not putting in any bicarb and we're not putting in any eggs. So there are things missing from the ingredients. Right, cake no. number four. OK, cake number four. We're still making a ginger cake but we're not putting in eggs and we're not putting in any spices. I think there's a series in this. It's like, it's like can't cook, can't cook either. Can't, can't cook either, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna make a little savoy on here. Once they're all mixed, they each go into the oven. This is like the Holy Grail. <laughs> Time to stop cooking. Right, so time to get these out. <laughs> it's beautiful. It smells oh, good. Gorgeous, isn't it? Right, that's mm. number one. Yours smells better than mine. Oh, and that's because yours hasn't got the spice in. That is still runny. Yep. Now, this is real cookery. Burnt fingers. The smell of singed flesh <laughs> in association with the delicate aroma. Now, these are all gingerbread men. Nobody would see them as anything but gingerbread men. This is the original, typical gingerbread man. Well risen, with all the ingredients well cooked. This is a less successful gingerbread man in terms of cooking. It has not yet achieved the right texture. OK, cashier number three, please. This one has fewer ingredients. It's lacking key ingredients, in this case, eggs, so its texture is really not great. It's not, not so good. The same is true for this rather flatter and paler gingerbread, which lacks certain other ingredients. In fact, in this case, it lacks the ginger, it lacks the bicarb, and uh, it's just not as interesting. So, so looking at those, give or take uh, a few characteristics, they're recognisable, but there are any number of factors that, that could be different. So what's that to do with ADHD? Well, I would see these two over here, the ones that lack different sets of ingredients, they are different sets of ingredients, although they're still gingerbread men, uh, as, as uh, illustrating the impact of the genetic influences, the genes that are missing or are present and stopping things developing. So different sets of genes here, different ingredients, different sets of, green, of uh, genes here, different ingredients, but this, is different because of the cooking. It is as if it has not had enough growth experience. So, for example, 
uh, babies who are born very, very early indeed are at greater risk. They won't all, but they're at greater risk of getting ADHD. Oh, right. So this is environment and this is genetic difference. These two are still perfectly edible, I mean, they, but they just function in a slightly different way from these because they have different characteristics. So that's in the makeup, the way they were cooked, yeah, yeah, and yeah. In, the, in the ingredients or yes. the genes that they have. There, there are so many ingredients that might be missing or that might be added, and there are so many ways of cooking that this illustrates a little bit of the complexity about gene and environment interactions and contributions. Genes and environment always interact. So there we are, a gingerbread man. I think this is the only science programme with both a helpline and a recipe sheet available on the website. Merry Berry, eat your heart out.